Arthur, honey. We're almost there. Are you awake? I'm sorry. I thought that Nurse Clark would be meeting us. Here are the keys. Thank you. Yeah, we had a flat on the trailer. I've never changed one, so. Oh, I can get those, Doctor. Let me get this one. Don't be silly. I know where this one goes. You must be Arthur. Time to decide if you're the man of the house. I wish you were here. Should be warm enough for tonight, but we can always unpack some more blankets. Arthur, it's past midnight. Good night, Mom. We were supposed to finish this together. I don't know if you can hear me. Or even know where I am. Maybe you see everything now. So, did you see it? A comet? It was so fast. And the sky was completely lit up. It was amazing. I'm going to go find it. Breakfast! All right. Three for everyone. Jeffrey. What? Timmy. No reading at the table. But Dr. Lazron just landed on Mars. But Dr. Lazron just landed on Mars. Johnny, Mars can wait. Just one more page. Don't talk back to your mother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I gotta go. Mrs. Peterman thinks aliens attacked her birdbath. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, young man, stop that! Hey! in from here, Mom. Uh, okay. Have a great first day. Okay. Please have a great first day. Well, as I said on the phone, I heard a crash. I got right out of bed to investigate, and there it was. I called your office immediately, but there was no answer. Well, Gladys doesn't come in until 7. We're a small force, Mrs. Peterman. Well, I know you have your way of doing things, Chief. This is yet more evidence of the real threat presented by creatures from beyond our sphere. Now, I tried to warn you about this when they came for Douglas. Your cat? Poor Douglas. You think these are the same aliens who took your cat? Don't you see? They're after the birds. The birds. They fly into their saucer's engine and disrupt them. Now I want to know what you're going to do about it. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go to my car, get my shovel. I'm going to dig this piece of UFO out of your yard and send it to Washington. Priority red. Priority red? Priority red, Mrs. Peterman. Well, it's about time. Arthur Milligan. Pleasure to meet you, Arthur. I hope you don't mind if I ask, but I was just wondering if... That's Wallace Jenkins, who you can obviously identify as the school bully. But enough about him. So, as I was starting to ask, where do you hail from, Arthur? California. Holy smokes! I've never seen an ocean. Are you close to the ocean? Boys and girls, in your seats. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Trable. Boys and girls, we have a new student joining us. Will you introduce yourself, please? His name is Arthur Milligan. Thank you, Timmy, but I'm sure Arthur can speak for himself. Hello, Arthur. Arthur, we just assigned science fair partners yesterday. Because we have an odd number, you'll need to join. Timmy? He can join me and Madeline. All right, then. Take out your books. I told the old man, Dr. Whittison. Right, I said I'll wait for her, but he said, when you're chief of the hospital, you can meet the staff. <laughs> so how late were you? Couple of hours. Must've been a real peach. He was fine. I'm sure. Oh, oh. Well, who's your friend there, Regina? Uh, Nurse Milligan, Lieutenant Quincy. Uh, Frank will do. Hi, Frank. Beth is fine for me. Beth Milligan. That's right. Beth is just joining us from California. Would that have been Edwards AFB? That's right. Huh. Well, I got it on the first try. How about that? All right, we're going to continue the tour now, Frank. He's a charmer, but he's harmless. He looks healthy enough. Head case. Oh. Gotta get your protein, my dad always says. So, Arthur, has Timmy told you that we're going to focus on chemistry? I told her about how my brother Jeff built a volcano. We're not doing one of those dumb volcanoes. I told you, I'd like to do something with ionization. Dr. Lazarum has an ionization bazooka. 
Anyway, I'd just like to state up front that I'd like to be project leader. Both my parents are scientists, and it's been my strongest subject since kindergarten. You didn't have science from kindergarten. That's gross to me. What? I'd like to do something with comets. That could be better than a volcano. We're not doing a volcano, and we're not doing comets. But we're a team, Madeline. Maybe we should have a vote. We should not have a vote. Wow, Sanders. Your boyfriend looks mad. It's OK, Arthur. Listen to your girlfriend. I don't know ain't an answer, Ronnie. What I don't know, boss. Well, do you know that somebody broke this window to get in here and make this mess? Do you know that? Sure, I guess so. You guess so. And would you guess that this mess is going to set our shop back about half a day at least? I guess. I guess. And who would you guess would want to do something like that? I don't know. You don't know. So make a guess. Would you guess it would be somebody that wanted to jam me up? Would that be your guess? I guess it would be. Huh. And who's next in line for my job, Ronnie? I guess I am. <laughs> you guess? No. Ronnie, you know that. That's a certainty. Now, I come in here this morning, somebody's broken this window, come in here and made this mess, torn this place to kingdom come, and you expect me to believe that that somebody is not you? But, but I was in bed early last night on account of my head cold. Plus, I got a key to the door, so I don't need to break no windows. Well, I tell you what, we're not cleaning this up. We're getting to work and we're not falling behind schedule. And then at shift's end, you're gonna stay here and clean this up under my supervision. And I will get to the bottom of this nonsense. Are we clear? Yes, sir, clear. Get started on that transport engine. John? John? Mr. Ramey. What seems to be the problem? Other than my dead prize sheep? Nothing. Well, John, we clearly have a liar in our midst. This is my prize sheep, and he is the murderer. You son of a god. You want to... I, I... Gentlemen, now, isn't there an easy way to identify whose sheep this is? Mine have the yellow tag. Yeah, yeah, the light yellow tag is me. Oh, well, it definitely belongs to one of you. He's a cold-blooded assassin. Oh, let the lying lips be put to silence, which speaks grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. And a murderer is a murderer, no matter how much scripture he spouts. All right, let's put the Bibles aside and tell me, is either one of you responsible for what happened to this animal? No. Certainly not. Look, look, John, I deserve to be repaid for you. this. Yes. This menace shaved at least three of my sheep last year before I caught him and kept the wall. It wouldn't surprise me if this moron killed his own sheep just to pin it on me. That's exactly the kind of scheme this idiot would come up with to try to pin it on me. All right, both of you stopped making sense a long time ago. The fact is, there's a dead sheep. If you want me to stand here and listen to your nonsense about who's is who's and what is what, well, you can each take half this sheep and shut up about it. Well, I don't want half a sheep. Exactly, because it's not yours. I can't have the whole thing. I you haven't suffered a real loss, which shows that I'm right. Oh, you're never right. This isn't over. You bet your bucket isn't over. You stole my wool! Ah! Well, I'm glad you two could be civil about this. Good luck with your sheep.
Students, what does Bert teach us? That the commies are coming. Wallace, you must have forgotten to raise your hand. But yes, vigilance. We must keep ourselves safe, not out of fear, but out of the duty to protect our way of life. Someone else, what does Bert teach us? Daisy. Miss Grable, would we have to eat from a soup kitchen if the commies come? Daisy. The point is, the Soviets may intend to come, but as long as we remain vigilant, we will remain safe from the enemies of democracy. This is what we are determined to safeguard, class. To keep safe the freedom for which our forefathers fought. Yes, Timmy. My dad wouldn't be police chief if we were commies. The Russian kind of government wouldn't let him. That's right, Timmy. The government wouldn't let us do a lot of things. So remember to duck and cover if you ever hear a bomb. We don't want them coming into our country and hurting anyone, especially you children. You are the ones who will grow up and keep this country safe from people like them. Yes, Madeline, dear. No one answered your question. You asked, what does the film teach us? It teaches us to duck and cover in the event of a nuclear attack by Russians. That's right, Madeline. Good. And you children, you'll support your country and all of our freedoms. Are we clear about this? Yes, Miss Grable. So is Beth short for Elizabeth? Yes. Elizabeth Ann. It's supposed to be Esther. I'm glad it's not. My grandmother's name was Esther. But I've always loved Elizabeth. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Do you know that one? Elizabeth Barrett Browning. That's a pretty one. Your ring is beautiful. How long have you been married? Uh, it was 14 years. Was? My husband passed away two months ago. He was a pilot. Happened in the line of duty. Oh my goodness, I am so, so sorry, Beth. I had no idea. Of course not. Here I am quoting silly love poems and you're struggling with this terrible loss. It's not your fault. And you have a boy? Mm -hmm. He must be devastated. I'm hoping the change will do him good. Why comments? Seems so boring. I think we should vote. My dad says in Russia, they don't even get to vote. We're lucky we live in America. I'm waiting, Arthur. Wait, what are comets? They're like snowballs made out of dust and ice. They shoot through the atmosphere and you can see them on Earth. Comets wouldn't even be possible without ionization, you know. I love snowballs. Have you guys ever even seen a comet? No, but I've seen a snowball and I'm not impressed. I saw a comet last night, a real one, right here in Granite Flats. You saw a comet? I think we should do our project on comets. Two votes out of three wins. <sighs> Any calls for me, Gloria? Uh, uh, just Mrs. Peterman, sir. Uh, she wants to talk more about her bird bath, sir. Wonderful. Oh, and sir? Yes. She sounded urgent, sir. Well, I'll call right away. Thank you, Gladys. You're welcome, sir. Dale! Come here for a sec, will you? Catch you? What's the metal? You ever seen anything like this? Well, sir, it's pretty space age. Honestly, it reminds me of that movie. What movie? Spaceship. You close with Mrs. Peterman over on Ridge Lane? Not particularly, sir. Why do you ask? No reason. Thanks, Dale. Aren't you supposed to be on patrol? Yes, sir. Gladys, let me know if anyone calls about metal. Metal, sir? Yes. Yeah, thanks, Gladys. Well, I, for one, am glad you're here. With all these old, cranky nurses around, it's nice to have somebody to talk to. Afternoon, Henry. Hi, Henry. I'm Beth. I'm new here. No! No! 
no, 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 Henry, no, no, Henry, no, 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 Private First no, Class no, Owens. No. Fall in line, soldier. At ease, Private. Sorry, that was my fault. I should have warned you about Henry. More than half of his squad was killed by a grenade round. He's so quiet, sometimes I forget what he's capable of. So now you know, don't touch Henry. Understood. <sighs> Are you sure it wasn't an asteroid? An asteroid is a rock. It doesn't have enough gravity to pull its shape into a ball. Plus, asteroids don't melt like comets, so therefore they don't have a tail. It was a comet. Did you tell your mom and dad? My dad's gone. Gone where? Hey, you were my kid. I'd split too. What? I said, if my kid were a loser like you, I'd be gone just like your old man. Come on, Wallace. Oh, Artie, I think your girlfriend's getting upset. Seriously, Wallace. You boys should stop this. Take it back. That's right. Take it back. Make me. Or maybe you'd rather run away. Just like your old man. Fight! 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 fight, fight what? Fight, no! Fight, Come on, fight, Arthur! Fight, 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 fight! And the rule is no fighting at all. It doesn't matter who started it, which honestly is totally unfair. And Miss Grable should know this. I was responsible. Well, sure, I mean, I guess I was responsible, too. Me, too. But you said stop it. Well, yes, of course. But I didn't succeed in stopping anything. Well, you sure didn't stop me. Golly, I didn't expect to be jumping into the fray like that. But duty called. Do you think Wallace will try to get revenge? I think we should be ready. What do you think, Arthur? Well, if he comes after us, we'll be ready for him. And we'll come out on top. She wants you, Sanders. What's the punishment? <sighs> Send home. Is your dad coming? My dad doesn't have time for this dope. He's got a real job. This ain't over. Let's meet up after and work on the science project, okay? I wonder if they called my mom or my dad. You should probably go back. Miss Grable just asked you to escort us down. I think she knows I'm implicated in this. She sent me down to try to get me to confess. Confess to what? Not stopping the fight. <sighs> My mom's not gonna like this. Were you in fights at your former school? I'm sure she'll understand if you tell her how Wallace provoked you about your father. If I can ask, where did he go? <sighs> Sent home. I have to wait outside for my dad. You're up, Arthur. It was an honor to fight at your side. See you later, Madeline. See you later. Well, I'll just send myself home then. Tim? Sorry about them calling you, but the principal said Mom wasn't answering. Uh-huh. You want me to tell you about the fight? I certainly do. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, there's this new boy, Arthur Milligan. He's my science fair partner. Well, you said last night that that girl was your science fair partner. We're a science fair trio. But anyway, it started at lunch. The fight? Sort of the fight before the fight, like the pre-fight. Wallace dumped some of my lunch frown at me. And then Arthur got into a standoff with him, nose to nose, probably feeling each other's hot breath. Tim. That's probably Arthur's mom. Anyway, at recess, Arthur was saying how his dad was gone. Gone where? I don't know. We never got the answer because that's when Wallace stepped in and said, you know, yeah, if I was your old man, I'd split too, loser. And Arthur wasn't going to take that. I mean, can you blame him, Dad? Seriously. Anyway, Wallace shoved Arthur twice. And the second time, Arthur ducked it and got around behind Wallace and jumped on his back. And both of them went down. And, well, honestly, Dad, the rest was kind of a blur. Until Madeline was pulling me off Wallace's ear. His ear? I bit his ear. Is that Arthur? 
It is. Well, don't be giving him a thumbs up, Tim. This isn't a proud moment, even if the two of you were provoked. Chief Sanders? Go ahead, Gladys. Carl called from over at the Empress. He said someone broke in. All right, we'll send Dale over. Dale, this is Peterman. What? Why? She called. Something about a priority red and wanting an update. <sighs> All right, I'm on my way. Do you think the burglar's still there? You were staying in the car, buddy. I don't know what to say to you, Arthur. I just do not know what to say. We'll discuss this tonight and what the consequences will be. But you're not to leave this house, do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I have to get back to work. Put some hydrogen peroxide on that. She's mad. She's so mad. I never should have said anything about you. You saw what that Wallace kid was like. I'm sorry about all of it. I just want to do the things that would make you proud. And I will. I will. Welcome back, kid. Thank you, Frank. Everything okay? Fine. Can I get you something? No, I'm all right. I was, uh, thinking about you. Is that right? I was thinking, why leave Edwards? That's a heck of a swell post, and to come out here to this little base in the middle of nowhere? Well, it's complicated. Uh, I bet. Uh-oh. Are you treating this patient, Nurse Mulligan? I'm finished, doctor. A word then. You left your post. I'm sorry, it was an emergency. Nurse Clark appraised me of the details. Yes, I asked her to tell you when I couldn't find you. You're aware this is a military facility? Of course. And as such, you have a commanding officer who- I tried to find you, sir. You would follow being absent without leave by being insubordinate? My son needed me, sir. Your record of service at Edwards was impeccable, but I see none of that in your behavior today. I suggest you make adjustments. <sighs> All set, boss. Pick it up, Ronnie. You're on latrine duty. What about cleaning up this mess? After latrine duty and get those toilets real clean. Well, what about you? Oh, I'm needed over at the enlisted men's club. Their beer levels are run a little high. Stay put. Carl, look at this. You could drive a Buick through it. Well, I'd say it wasn't a Buick. Well, it was something. And did you find anything? I didn't go inside. What if there's somebody still in there? The door's locked. Uh-huh. So somebody broke in so they could lock themselves inside? <laughs> Are you asking me? <sighs> Why don't you let me in, Carl, and I'll have a look around. Give me a second. Tim, let me see that flashlight. I gotta take a look inside the theater. You do not move, clear? What's going on? Tim, what I just say? I won't move, sir.
1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000, 6 1000. Okay, I checked my math twice, just like you taught me. Holy cow, Demon. I told him I told you I left. I told him that too. He said I had to talk to him as head of the hospital. He told me that too. And I told him that the school called about Arthur. At this point, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? <sighs> I'm sorry, I just, it's not been a very good first day. Present company excluded? Well, certainly. Listen, Whittison's a tough old bird. He lost his son in Korea and his wife took her own life after that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So whenever I feel like strapping him to a gurney and sending him off for electroshock treatment, I remember that. But don't let on that you know he has no time for pity. You think he was upset about you leaving without talking to of him? Of course. So is Arthur all right? I mean, he wasn't hurt? No. No, he was the aggressor. Ever, not once has he done that hit another boy. I consider it a miracle you've made it this far. I had four brothers, and my mother spent a lot of time getting called to the principal's office, believe me. Spend it on his first day. It's certainly a way to make an impression. Getting in trouble with the boss on day one. Are you being funny? I am sure trying. <laughs> Listen, Beth, his father passing, that is something that he's going to have to deal with, and it might come out in ways that you don't expect. What are you doing? Looking for you. Aren't you supposed to be in school? I sent myself home for my involvement in the fight. You weren't involved in the fight. I thought you and I could discuss the science fair project without the interference of our excitable colleague. Do you talk like that normally? Talk like what? I gotta go. Where are you going? <coughs> hey, boss. Dance doesn't bother you? No, nah, I'm all plugged up because my head cold. Today's your lucky day, Ronnie. Some idiot corporal ran a Jeep off the road, tore the front fender off and half the side with it. So you're done here. OK, thanks, boss. When you're finished with that, you can clean up that mess you made. And don't, don't even tell me you didn't make it. The reason I think it's G-Men is not only the way they were dressed and all, but also they had a pretty secretive manner going there. Driving in that car there. What were they doing is all I'm saying, Dad. I mean, obviously they were casing a joint. Obviously. But I don't think they were casing the theater over a broken window. That's just not the kind of thing G-Men be investigating, right? Not that the broken window kind of incident isn't important or anything like that, Dad. That's definitely not what I'm saying at all. I know your job is important. You don't know a thing about my job, Tim. Not a thing. You can quit your yammering and pay attention for the next hour of my shift. You might actually learn something. How's that sound? All right. Good. So no talking at all? That's the idea. What if I have a question about the job? As long as it's relevant to what's happening, OK. What if I have to go to the bathroom? Obviously, tell me if you have to use the bathroom. Um, I have to use the bathroom.
I washed my hands. Mm-hmm. What are you doing, Dad? My job. What are those things? Timmy. You said questions about your job were okay. Okay. I found this in Mrs. Peterman's front yard. It's the seeming culprit in the destruction of her bird bath. She believes it fell from the sky. She thought it was aliens. Yes, she did. I found this up by Towns and Ramey's farms. We killed one of their sheep. Wow. And the way I see it, had to be coming down on it. Like from the sky, like aliens. Well, maybe. And then this piece was in the cinema. Probably broke the glass. Well, I mean, wow. Wow, Dad. I mean, if you ask me, these three pieces are definitely connected. I mean, for sure. Well, they certainly don't fit together. But they do appear to be the same material. And they have a similar discoloration. So, I would say I'd come to the same conclusion you do, Tim. And you're totally ruling out the aliens. Let's go explain to your mother how you got into a fight. Ronnie, they need this back and running by tomorrow. Well, we had that fender, but we ain't got the side panel in stock. Ronnie, you remember when I first vouched for you for this posting? It was on account of you had a special skill. Yeah, I do remember that. What was that skill? Welding. <laughs> I get it, boss. You want me to weld you a new panel. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> get her inside, get her finished by shift's end. Uh, boss? Yeah. Uh, doors are still locked. Hurry up. Yes, sir. still say comets. Are you an only child? I ask because only children have a tendency to expect to get their own ways. So you must be an only child. No. But my brother is 11 years older than me, and I'm adopted. So you might think I would be in a position to get what I want. But I don't actually think that's really true. It's not true for me either. As we seem to be at an impasse, let me make a suggestion. Whomever gets the most skips on a stone gets to choose a subject for our science project. OK, ladies first. I'm not like that. You go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Impressive. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, 
don't know. 